Hello and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Emma's Eye Catchers in association with Boyle Sports, getting really close to the festival now and in this week's episode I'm going to take a look at five key stats or trends which stood out to me looking at certain races at the festival. First race I'm going to have a look at is the Ultimates, the first handicap of the festival and one which the British have dominated for the past 20 odd years. I think you have to go back as far as 2006 when Tony Merton won it with Dundor to find the last Irish trained winner. At the top of the market we have the Willie Mullins trained meeting of the waters maybe it might be worth keeping in the back of your mind that Willie Mullins has never trained a handicap chase winner at the Cheltenham Festival I don't really think that will put me off the favourite to be honest I don't think it was probably top of Willie's priority list to target these Cheltenham handicap chases and probably only a matter of time before he takes that one off he went close last year with Dino Blue in the Grand Annual so it's probably not the kind of stat that will put me off backing a horse but one other thing to keep in the back of your mind is Course form is kind of important in the ultimate and horses who come back to try the ultimate again actually have a great record. We've had two repeat winners in the past decade, Corrick Rambler in the last two years in a row and Temps Portois for the Pipe team as well went back to back in the Ultima. You don't actually have to win it on your first try either to do well. Vintage Clouds actually famously won it I think on his fifth attempt back in 2021 and two horses coming back here to have another go at the ultimate after finishing third and fourth last year are Mon Big Genius for John Joe O'Neill and the Goffer for Gordon Elliott, who is fancied in the market as well. Finally, last key stat I think for the ultimate. To find the winner, I think they have to have experience over three miles. I think all of the last 12 winners have won over that distance. So it's a test of stamina and they need to be proven over the trip heading into this one. The next race I thought was interesting from a stats or trends perspective is the Boodles. Always a bit of a minefield for punters, these kind of inexperienced juveniles coming into this big field Cheltenham Festival handicap. But there's a few maybe pointers to to take note of um, when picking your selection. I think one key one is I think nine of the last 12 winners of the Boodles have come from that 125 to 134 bracket in the handicap ratings. Maybe a slight worry then for a lark in the morning who's coming into this operating a 122 a little bit below kind of the the average winning mark for this race in the past. One more thing that might go against him is I think you have to go back as far as 2016 when Paul Nichols won this with Diego de Charmel to find the last horse coming into the Boodles and winning without a win under their belt already that season. So two slight negatives there for the Joseph O'Brien trained lack in the morning. One other key thing for the Boodles is there's a really um, key prep race it seems to be in Nace earlier on in the season Four of the last five winners of the Boodles have gone from that Nace race to win the Boodles at Cheltenham. So it's kind of hard to ignore that one. We've had Jazzy Matty last year. He didn't actually win in Nace, but went on to win at the Boodles. Brazil won it, Aramax won it, and Band of Outlaws. So four of the last five have gone from Nace to Cheltenham. This year we have Eagles Fang, Bright Legend, Pacini, and Nara all going from that Nace race to Cheltenham. So probably ones maybe to keep an eye on. I had a look at was the county hurdle and this is one which while it's interesting to get stuck into it can be very difficult for punters. I think only two of the last 12 winners have been SP favourite on the day. Those were Saint Roy and Stateman trained by Willie Mullins and looking at the record of trainers in this race you want to target a horse trained either by Dan Skelton or Willie Mullins. They've won eight of the last nine renewals of this one so whatever they have in here is sure to be well fancied. Looking at the profile of horses then that normally win the county, I think 11 of the last 12 winners have been rated over the 134 mark. In the age profile then, I think 8 of the last 12 winners have been 5 or 6 year olds, which I thought was a really, really interesting stat. So you're looking for a progressive young hurdler who might have a little bit in hand in the handicapper. One who I fancied for this was Zenta, and she does seem to fit that profile, a young progressive filly from the Mullins stable. Yeah, for this year is definitely a wide open contest, especially with the news Marine National has been ruled out. And looking at the trends for this race, one key one that sticks out in my head is you have to go back as far as 2009, when for Paddy the Plaster or got his head in front, to find the last Arkle winner who hadn't won on their last start on the lead up to the festival. That would put doubts in the mind of some of the more fancied runners, such as Found of 50, who have been beaten on the run up to the, to the, to the meeting. And another thing coming into the Arkle is course form can be he. And while Elete Tom does fit the building as having a run at the festival, 
and winning on his last start. I'm not totally sure he performs to the best of his abilities at Cheltenham. So one I think fits the billing maybe even better at Quixilios, the Triumph Hurdle winner from a few years ago. He won on his last start at Nace. And the vibes seem to be strong around him coming into this one. He might be just starting to put things together over fences. And in a wide open looking renewal, he might be one to take a little jab. A Bartlett novice hurdle can be a grueler. These novices have to stay extremely well to get up the hill at the end of those three miles. I think only one of the last 12 winners were favourites going back as far as 2013 when AP McCoy won it on at Fisher's, and on at Fisher's Cross for Rebecca Curtis. Good horses can sneak into this race at big prices. Melilla Indo won this at 50 to 1 for Henry de Bromhead. So looking outside the box might be key in the Albert Bartlett. Um, big prices tend to, to do well in here. I think that nine of the last 12 winners were over that 11 to 1 mark. So wouldn't be afraid to take a chance at one at bigger prices. One who I put up was Crow Park. Disappointed last time. But looking at last year's race, Afrodale Fury ran a similar disappointing race. In the Lawlers and Ace as well, but was able to bounce back at Cheltenham. So I might stick with Gordon Daniel's charge. He looks like a grueling stare, um, and at each way, price is probably the way to go on the Albert Bartlett.